Tonight and every other weeknight here on ENCA, a variety of newsmakers will get their chance to host this program. We'll give you, the viewer, a chance to get involved in the conversation, unfiltered, accountable, and accessible. Former Finance Minister Malusi Gigaba announced a proposed value-added tax increase of 1% during his 2018 budget speech. Despite massive criticism, the minister and some economists have claimed that this increase will not affect the poor because there are 19 basic food items that are zero rated. But people cannot survive on only 19 types of food and also need school uniforms, sanitary pads, toiletries and many other things that are currently not VAT exempt. What more could government have done? Possibly redouble efforts to crack down on some ultra-rich South Africans and companies who are avoiding paying tax. We all have to pay our fair share. We know that this will hit the poorest the hardest. Even the ANC MP and Finance Committee Chair, Yunus Karim, has stated that the ANC caucus did not want the VAT increase because of the impact it would have on the poor. Following an outcry from people, government appointed an independent panel of experts to review the list of zero-rated items and propose solutions to alleviate the impact of the VAT increase on poor and low-income households. Tonight, we will explore what alternatives government could have used to increase revenue that aren't anti-poor and what more needs to be added onto the zero-rated list. You can be a part of this conversation. Here's how. Tweet us at ENCA using the hashtag LHIO. Call us on 011-759-6340. Or send us a WhatsApp or WhatsApp video on 082-884-6370. And make sure those videos are no longer than 30 seconds, please. I'm joined now in studio by VAT panel member, Professor Imran Velodia, who's also the Wits University Dean of Commerce, Law and Management. Good evening, Prof. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure. So I suppose the beginning is, even though the VAT hike has, been, has gone forward, the most obvious question to start is, do you think there were alternatives to the proposal? So my view is is that they were probably n n n uh, that there was uh, kind of probably not much of an alternative. Um, um, I think you can have a debate about what 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 are the other taxes that that might have been increased. Um, so as I understand it, the, uh, the 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 kind of problem was that you were trying to plug a gap uh, a gap um, of about twenty five. Uh, a billion, and kind of Treasury had to find the the uh, to find a way to plug that gap. There's kind of really two two ways in which you can plug the gap. You can increase taxes, um, or else you can reduce expenditure. So on the uh, tax side, you have three kind of alternatives. Really, you can increase VAT, you can increase. Uh, company taxes, or you can, uh, or can, or else you can increase uh, personal income taxes. So let's deal with each one. I think the, the 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 kind of scope to increase personal income taxes was not great, and the kind of reason for that is that you have to think about taxes not kind of each year, but you have to think about it over a period of time. So we did increase personal income taxes l l last year, and there was not much scope to increase them much more. The kind of additional thing you must you must think about when you when you deal with taxes is that you 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 do change uh, uh, change uh, people's economic behaviour, and you have to confront the fact that it, that. That if you increase the uh, the rate of of taxes, you could actually end up getting less um, money from that that tax because people change their behaviour, they hide they kind of hide their incomes, etc. And can, as you increase the rate, you kind of create the incentive for all for kind of all of that behaviour. So I don't think there was a lot of of scope to to kind of increase uh, personal income taxes. I think, they, and, and I've, I've said this 
publicly. I think there was some uh, scope to, to possibly increase company taxes. The problem is you would not have got that much, uh, 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 that much uh, kind of income from it. So the, the kind of revenue impacts were, were, would be quite small. You have to increase the company okay. taxes by a large amount to get a small amount so, of, of revenue. So I think VAT... I'm going to interrupt no, you okay. quickly there, sure. Hale. So the feeling that I'm getting is that you're saying that um, there wasn't any room for closing the loopholes that enable the wealthy to take money out, and you don't think that um, a net wealth tax is a viable solution? Um, I, I, I do think so. I think we, we kind of agree on that. I, mm. I do agree that a, a wealth tax is something we should we should be doing. Uh, the uh, uh, Davis Tax Committee has has looked into it. Um, I think they've made certain suggestions, and you know, one doesn't introduce a wealth tax without thinking through what the implications are. The problem is, so, so, so I'm a strong supporter of the fact that we should have a wealth tax. The problem you have to deal with is you're not going to get a large amount of, uh, 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 of, of uh, government, in, uh, government income from, from, a, from a wealth tax. So to go back to the previous point, I think the, 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 the difficult thing that you had to con confront was either you increase uh, kind of either you increase VAT or else you reduce expenditure. And, and for me, uh, it was the, the, the negative impacts of reducing expenditure would have been a, 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 a lot worse on the poor. So we've already reduced uh, kind of expenditure on really, really critical things like like the school, uh, uh, like the school uh, sort of uh, building program. We've reduced uh, we've, re uh, we've, re uh, we've reduced expenditure in areas such as health, and and for me that is the trade-off. Do we do we increase that, or do we uh, do we reduce expenditure? And I think the, the, the we, we we live in a country that is so unequal, and and the poor have to ha uh, uh, kind of really really struggle to 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 get to get by i think reducing expenditure would have had a, an enormously negative impact on the poorest of the poor in south africa so so i i for me um i think that the choice is not a choice anyone wants to make it's not a choice we feel happy about but it's it's a it's the best of the alternatives that were on the table I'm quite curious about why it is when we talk about a decrease in expenditure, we always assume that it is the social expenditure that must be cut. When for us members of the public, right, we follow the news about ministers getting like price stands at such huge prices. We follow the news, we see the expenditure on things like the state of the nation. We see a lot of expenditure on vanity projects. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very interested in the assumption that a cut in an expenditure always means a social cut, like a cut on social spending. Mm. But we will get back to that conversation.